Hello guys, how are you doing? I hope everyone doing good. If you've seen in the news, you may already know Sri Lanka. We have uh, some hard time these days, but we will be okay soon. Um, I got an opportunity to talk to a bunch of university students and last week at my office. And we talk about like JVM, JDK and how things work, reflection and how Java works, so many cool stuff. Um, but usually what my experience is, especially at least in Sri Lanka, I didn't experience this in India or in, even in the United States. When at the end of the session, people usually don't ask questions. I don't know, maybe they're shy, maybe they don't want to get highlight. For some reason, they don't ask questions. So therefore, in some sessions, I set up some online uh, portal so they can submit their question anonymously. So they, uh, I don't know who asked this question, but I can answer the question. Because whole point is, I don't care who asking the question, but if that someone has a question, it's a question, I want to answer that. Unfortunately, during this session, uh, I missed few questions, uh, what they asked, I saw those when I come back home. So one of those questions is a little tricky. So I decided to answer that question today. Also, what I realized, even people coming out from university, even people coming out from uh, after learning Java for years, they don't have a clear understanding about Java and exactly why this is working. Because in software engineering field, why is always matters, right? Because you need to know why this is happening. Then only you can understand the problems you are facing and that's how you can use solution to problems. For example, they say, okay, Java is a platform independent, but they don't know why it's a platform independent and how it's platform independent. For example, they don't even know what it means by platform independent. They always say, okay, it's running on the Windows, Linux and Mac. No, it's operating system, right? And sometimes they say uh, Java is right once run anywhere. Okay, cool. But can I run the Java program what I write on the uh, laptop on a MacBook? Can I run the same Java program as it is on the, my iPhone? No, I can do it. Why? They don't know. Why they don't know? Because they don't know how Java achieve those things. So anyway, so therefore fundamentals matter. So therefore I'm going to address one of those fundamental questions um, they ask. Okay, his question is this. I explain in there the string in Java is something called immutable, right? So, and I explain what the immutability mean. So his question was in simple, just give me one second. So his question was, uh, you explain Java as immutable. Yes, I understand that. And you explain uh, immutable mean you cannot change something once you create it. But I always can assign new value to a string variable, how that works. And more than that, I'm interested to know why Java designed a string as immutable. So pretty much valid question, but there is a little misunderstanding here. Immutable doesn't mean, okay, let me explain that, okay? So yes, the string is immutable in Java. First thing is, what is immutability? What does immutable mean? Immutability mean, once you create an object, you cannot change it, you cannot modify it. If you want to modify it, you will see if you want to you modify it, but behind the scene, what happens is it creates a new object. For example, let's say you have a variable called a string name, right? So name you assign to John, right? So you assign name to John. So what he's saying, later he can assign the name equal J. Pretty much valid, right? So, but what really happens is not what you see. This is variable. You change the value of the variable, but you are not changing the object. The immutable is, what is immutable is object. You are not changing that, okay? So, I understand you're confused. Let me explain, okay? So, if you take this, okay, you know, I mean, uh, if you uh, watch my JVM videos, you know JVM has multiple parts, right? Heap, the stack, PC registers, uh, native method, so many areas. But you know if any object, Java, if you create in Java, it's going to store in a heap, okay? So what happened here, we explained this in detail in a JVM video, so I'm not going to talk about those. So once you create a variable called name, 
That's it, because it is an object. But when you assign John into the name, what happens is Java create an object in a heap and set its value to John, right? And this one is pointing to the John. That's what actually happened. Okay? So now what you do here in the next slide, you're setting name equal J. There what happens is JVM create new Okay, I said Java create, JVM create, you know that, right? So uh, it create a new object called J and it dereference in this and then it refers to here. Okay, it refers to here. So now, did we change the object? No, we didn't, right? But we create new object called J and we point the uh, J name variable to the J, right? So this may be in memory address 100, this may be in memory address 200, okay? Why exactly this is happening? Why Java designed this string as immutable? Okay, so let's think something like this. Okay, let's think something like this. So now, you have a name as John, right? And also you have a string person is John, right? String employee is John, right? So you have three different variables, but the value is John. So Java use something called string pool, okay? Why? Because string is the most uh, used data type and to give the performance efficient. Just, just uh, see this one, okay? So let's say this is a four byte, this is a four byte value. Right? To write the John, you need the four bytes, okay? So now I create the three variables. That means I use 12 bytes in my memory, okay? So if I create 1000 variables, but the value is John, then it's a 4000 bytes, okay? So what, but what Java does is, when you first create this name, right? And then you create the John here, right? It create the John here, and it's pointing this to this, right? It's pointing this to this. Right, so this is happening in the string pool, but I'm I'm drawing this here to uh, you with the easy understanding, right? So now when you say person is John, what the Java does is a tricky thing, right? It create a person variable and it point it to the same John, right? Same object, and when you say employee, right? When you say employee, it create this it point to the same object. Now you see, right? Three variable. You see as a three variables, but actually Java create one object and pointed all three variables to this object. Okay? So you can see this, right? You know Java has an equal methods and dot equals. Right? So if you want me to explain these as well, just put me a comment. Right? So now if you compare name equal equal uh, person and equal equal employee, you will see what happened. Right? What would be the output? You can see whether name is equal to equal person and you can check person equal to equal employee, right? You can say this, but under one condition, in case if you use something like this, right? In case if you use something like this, a string, per, uh, let's say, yeah, let, this one, okay, let's change this one. If you use a string employee equal New string, new string John, then this act as a different. Why? Because you are asking explicitly to create a new object. Right? So now what Java does is, it does not do this thing, right? It does not do this thing. It creates a new object outside the pool, right? And name that as a John. Right? and employee point there. So now if you put name equal equal employee, now it will say false. Why? Because equal equal sign always compare the references, but 
Now these references are different. Why it's a different, different object? Okay. So this is the immutability, right? Immutability doesn't mean you cannot change the value of the variable, right? Immutability means you cannot the, change the object you created. Okay. So now why Java design in this way? So you already have this one, this solution. Why? Because if Java if string is not immutable, when you use join on a thousand places, then you need to spend uh, four times thousand in memory. Not exactly four, right? But uh, you know what I'm saying, right? So it's it's a it's uh, occupied the memory for each variable value. But since Java design a string in an immutable way, Java can do this, right? Java can do this. So see, so you have this single four kilobytes, sorry, four bytes. But you can assign a tens or thousands or millions of variables to the same point, but it doesn't consume memory from uh, JVM, right? Why? Because it's immutable, it's the same object. Okay. So now, if you do something like this, right? So name equal John, okay? And then string employee equal John. And when I write this dots and the capital simple, it's work differently, but just uh, this illustration purposes, right? So now what you're saying is name equal J. Okay? So now what actually happens here, you have the name, right? And it pointed to the string pool John, right? And then you have an employee, right? And it pointed to the join itself. Now you repointing J as a name into the J, right? So now it's create a J, it dereference in this, but it's go here, right? But join is still here, why? It's AMP is referring to that. So this lead another thing, in when you create a thread safe code, right? Either one thread, let's say something like this, right? So you have a method, right? So let's say you have a method called uh, do it, right? So now you're getting this name here as a parameter, right? So now once you pass the name here, right? So during this execution, there are a bunch of code executing here. Then after that, you do something to this. Let's say you um, you you uh, set this employer promotion right on the next level, okay? But before that, you do some stuff here and assign this uh, this employer promotion. So now, if this is not thread safe, the when if some other thread set the name uh, to join to some uh, Jane here, right? If they reassign the name equal Jane like this, right? So now what happened? This can the promotion can go to the Jane. Why it is not thread safe? You someone alter the value of the object you are referring, right? Why? Because in a uh, in a heap, right? Can you see? It? All right. Okay. Let me go it here. Okay. So in a heap, so now the name John here, right? So you refer the name, okay? So you refer the name. And now, in this method, when you refer to the name, if Java was not immutable, someone changes to J, right? So now, when you give the promotion, it's go to the J, right? So there is one other concept, you need to understand this, but there is a pass by value or pass by reference, how Java works. It's a different topic, but uh, this can, I mean, this is not happening. What I'm saying, if Java was not, uh, if, if string was not designed immutable, there are certain uh, impact like this happen. So that's why the string works as immutable, and this is what the immutability mean. And immutability doesn't mean you cannot change the value of the variable. Immutability mean you cannot change the object once you created it. That's it. Talk to you soon in next video.